Page 19, The Lark. In this piece, we are reviewing endings, first and second endings. You can have more than you can have three endings, four endings, or what, there, uh, there's no limit. Most of the time, you'll just see two endings, first and second endings. Here we go, two four time, two sharps. It's in D major, or B minor. We'll find the end of it. Where does it end? At the very bottom, you're here. That's a B minor chord. I'm guessing this is in B minor, probably. So you need to do the scale, on the D major scale, and the B minor scale. Just do them both. Just go work on those. Have fun. <laughs> Take it right hand first. You've got a lot of eighth notes and quarter notes. So you're starting here, but you're going to move around here. You're not in a nice five finger position. So it's one, two, one, two, one, and two. Now cross over. This is the first measure, second line. You cross over for the C. So now we're in this position. So again, the first line, second measure. No. First major, second line, you'll figure it out. It's here. It's a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and rest. And during the rest, you come back up. Can we get to do that again? Aren't we lucky? Now, third line down, in the, in the third measure, you're here because you just played what you've already played. And then you go on. One and two and one and two and two. Then the repeat sign, I'll send you back to the top because there's no reverse repeat sign anywhere. So you go to the top and you do that much again. Let's, let's go on though. The second ending there on the fourth line down. You're here. It's rather repetitious, isn't it? Now here you're going to go down and they want third finger on the D because we need to be in this position. So again, the fourth line, last measure, it's one and two and three and four and. Now C sharp is in the key signature. And two. See, when you're doing these positions, C position and D position and whatever, you put your hands on the keys according to the key signature. So in B minor, there's two sharps. So when I have a, I'm in B position, I'm using C sharp and F sharp. My hand, my fingers are there. It's not here, it's here. So when I'm in these different positions for the key signatures, I'm automatically just putting my fingers on the black keys. If you know the scale, this kind of comes naturally because you're so accustomed to seeing those black keys in this key signature. It just happens. It, it's really nice. It takes time to get there, but I'm encouraging you to keep at it. Be thinking of the key you're in when you're playing these pieces. It doesn't work on everything, but it works on most things. Left hand. Eighth notes all over the place. So rhythm-wise, big deal. Note-wise, well, here's another story. It's a broken chord. Now, if you, this doesn't work because you got big fat fingers and all, and you have to go here. Otherwise, use the fingering in the book. Just don't stay up here. You're only up here long enough to play that key and then you're back out here. Second line, second measure, A sharp. For the most part, that's it. Let's go down to the third line. Second measure, you're here. Now here, now A natural, and then here. Don't forget to C sharp, it's in the key signature. And then fourth finger for the fourth line. So forth. Let's go on the second ending there on the fourth line. You're here, B sharp, and then here, and then A sharp. Here it's all black keys, so you're safe up here. Now here, they're saying four. That's fine. And then now they want five. And then here. And here. I tend to use the fourth finger on the A sharp. 
this is a broken chord. It's a seventh seventh chord, but I tend to use fourth finger. You can use third if you want. Put the heads together slowly. It's here. I don't want to play it all for you. You figure it out. When you can do that, then get rid of the hesitation so these eighth notes are steady. You'll have to go this fast. This is a slow piece anyway, so that's fine. Take your time with it. But it needs to be steady. And then we can do the slurs. Well, in the left hand again, I don't like the slurring. I'm going to suggest to you in the left hand, connect everything. Connect it all the way through. In the right hand, they've got the phrasing marked. And that's fine. Lift up before and after each slur, or each phrase. So at the end of the first line, you're here. And then, then lift up. So we hear that. And it's a little lift. It's not a big lift. It's just a little lift. So the at the top... You have to lift up. But in the left hand, you're connecting all these. And then the dynamics. Well, that applies to the melody, which is in the right hand. Soft, whatever you think soft is, not super soft, just soft. The left hand is super soft. And you're staying that way more or less until the last measured second line. You come up just a little bit to moderately soft, sort of soft. The left hand stay in the background. It's just a little louder than more. And then in the middle of the third line, you have a crescendo, and you're going to go up to loud. Well, plan it out, because if you don't plan it out, you'll be loud by the next measure. See, I'm loud already. No, we don't want to do that. We're staying soft. Come up to moderately soft. Next measure, go up to moderately loud. I just I did it a measure at a time. I went up. So again, moderately soft. Loud on. And that's the right hand. The left hand stays out of the way. And then in the fourth line, you come down. Now here the left hand can help you. So the, by going from sort of a moderately soft to very soft. That gives the illusion of what the right hand is doing, which is nothing really, is it? So just in the left hand, just keep each of, each, each of these notes is a little softer. That's all. You have to practice it. Because that sends you back to the top where you're soft again. You want to be soft. You want to blend into that. Then second ending, you're moderately loud here. So, on the third line, and on the second time when you crescendo up, you're only going to go up to moderately loud, not loud. So it's a soft, moderately soft. You're pretty much staying moderately soft. Now you can, if you want, come down to soft so you got more room to get up. So soft, moderately soft, moderately loud for the second ending. diminuendo in the last line, second measure, that means get softer, gradually get softer, decrescendo, same difference. Moderately loud, moderately soft, soft. But again, I did it like a measure at a time, so moderately, moderately loud, moderately soft, soft, and the left hand is really soft. How soft can you make it? So play around with the dynamics, but keep in mind it is to the melody. Speed-wise, lento is, they give you a metronome. It, it is slow. About as fast as what I've been demonstrating, I think. Typically is what it is, so. Ah, and then fun part, they've added pedal. Well, in this piece, you can actually do that. We can add the overtones, it's kind of nice. 
I mean, there's, it's all connected pretty much, and there's no staccatos or nothing. We just have to be careful so we don't smear it up. You see, when you play fast and you smear things up, it's not so bad because the notes are whizzing by so fast because they're okay. But when you play slow, people have time to hear the notes longer, and so the smearing is worse. So you have to be careful on that. They're suggesting you change pedal about every measure where the harmony is changing, and that's typical, but we still have to watch out on these eighth notes in the right hand. So if I play it the way they're showing, it sounds like this. sounds okay to you, that's fine, do it. I have problems with it. I like to hear the phrasing in the right hand. So at the end of the first line you hear, and I want, I want to hear that silence, that breath here. So what I'm going to do when I, on the phrasing is I'm going to lift, I'm going to pedal it with the phrasing, with the right hand. So when the right hand comes up, the pedal comes up. So it's here in the last measure of the first line. So, and that's fine, then they can go back down. And then the second line, last two measures. I want to lift it up, I want to hear the rest in the right hand. So I, I don't pedal the second beat, that's all, that's fine. So throughout this, I'm going to pedal it with the phrasing in the right hand. Otherwise, I think it's pretty good the way it is. So it's something like that. As far as interpreting it goes, I mean, you might. I tend to slow down sometimes. There's no retard on those, but it's, I just feel it. It's like at the end of the first ending, there on the on the fourth line. I tend to want to just hang on it, and then before I, you don't have to. That's just the way I felt it, and I won't feel it like that every time I play it. If I feel it, I do it. Otherwise, I'll just go on. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and all. I don't think the rhythm's a problem. I'm going to pedal it like I suggested to, but we're going to do the whole thing with the first to second ending. So I'll give us two counts, because there's only two counts in a measure. So I'm going to go ready and go and, and then we go. Ready and go and one. Second ending. 